action! Yes! Oh, no! Yes! Oh. The fair Teresa! Oh, no! Devil in my pelvic side! Be all your sins remembered! You know, the press are always asking me what it's like to be Prime Minister. And in the early days, one of them had the audacity to say, Oh, haven't you asked him? Well, it was all a bit of a turn up for the books. I mean, the dust had scarcely settled on Samantha Cameron's skirting boards before they were ushering the children out the back door as Hubby and I arrived at the front. Hardly had time to brush my shoes before I was up at the palace, shaking the Queen's hand and going down on one knee swearing to do my duty. She was no less shocked than I was, and I must admit, more than a little alarmed, I had wondered if this was because the last female PM had been Mrs. T, and it's common knowledge they didn't get on. Turned out, though, she was more concerned about leaving Europe and kept pressing me on the question of whether it was all absolutely necessary. She's harped on about it ever since, on and on like a broken record. Honestly, if I didn't know better, I think she'd been talking to Tony Blair. It's all got on my nerves a bit, this feeling like a caretaker PM. These Tory chaps can be terribly clannish, and they were on my tail right from the moment go, snapping and snarling like a pack of hounds. They scented blood all right. The referendum had thrown it all up in the air. Cameron, Boris, Farage, Gove. You couldn't tell which one would come down first. But none of them expected me to slip in between David's demise and Boris's hopes. There was only one thing to do. There was only one way to shut them up. And there was only one way to do it. I decided to take a walk. The morning began with low clouds scudding over the Welsh hills, and all about were dotted soft, woolly sheep. I was striding through the wheat, drawing in great breaths of fresh spring air, <coughs> when suddenly an old ram appeared in my pathway. I stared at it in surprise. It bore an uncanny resemblance to the leader of the opposition. <laughs> There was not enough room on the path for two of us. And with an uncharacteristic obstinacy for one of its kind, it refused to budge. I tried shooing it out of the way, but its response was to utter a low and penetrating there. With that moment, the mist began to clear and the sun shone through the clouds. And then it came to me, a Damascene moment. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I must not be seen as one of the flock. I must be the undisputed and democratically elected shepherd who alone could bring about a strong and stable government. I lifted my leg, drew back my foot, and kicked up the ground with a hefty walking boot. Gave a protesting moan and limped off, no doubt back to the cliffs where the rest of the flock were waiting to push him off. It was a no-brainer, as they say. I must call a general election, secure my place as PM, and demolish the opposition in one fell blow. It was foolproof. I threw my arms out in the air, sound of music style, and began to sing to the reverberate hymns. Maybe I'm right, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm weak, and maybe I'm strong, but nevertheless, it's what I must do. Maybe I'll win, and maybe I'll lose. I'll just have to wait for people to choose, but nevertheless, it's what I must do. Somehow I know it depends. The terrible chances I'm taking. Right at the start, now left with a voice that is brave. Maybe I'll live 
And maybe I'll give much more than I'll get. But nevertheless, it's what I 